Hi, welcome to My Messy Fingers. <clears throat> I'm working on an album that I've been kind of working off and on with. It's the Steampunk Spells by Graphic 45. It is an older collection, but I, <clears throat> excuse me, want to play with this because it's been sitting around for a little while. And so I'm back at it again, and I do want to let you know that I am doing two different types of videos on this. So I do apologize if you're seeing some apparatuses that you haven't seen before, but I'm trying two different formats to see which one's gonna work better than the other. So let's get down to our base page. This is gonna be a waterfall signature. So our base page, I think I've got this turned the wrong way. So hold on here just a second. Is this going this way? Is this going this way? All right, now I need to make sure that these are gonna fit still. <clears throat> Oh, that's going to be kind of tight. It's going to be really tight. But I think I'm going to make it work. I'm going to have about 1 16th of an edge there and in between and there. And I'm still going to try and make it work. Let me double check this one more time. It does go this direction. I could always trim, but that means I've got to trim everything down. I'll just be careful and put it on, put mine on, but I'm gonna give you some instructions to maybe shrink yours up just a little bit. So this is measuring <clears throat> seven and uh, three quarters by seven and a half. So what you could do on this, because, and I might solve that myself. I'm sorry I'm kind of messing around here, but I don't want to make things really tight. I always have this border right here so that I don't encroach onto my gusset too much. And I cut this just on that edge so I could come over a little bit more if I cut a different piece and put on here so let me take a look and see these are eight by eight papers here that I'm playing with so that I'm staying with the same pattern let me see if I have another one of these sheets. Ah, uh, I do. Okay, so I'll save this one to work on a later project. It's easy to do. So I am going to remeasure this. I'm going to come in the middle of this and then I'm going to make my trim this should give me a little bit more room running the width I had been playing with that, but I apparently I had the paper laying in the wrong direction and thought I was good to go until I got ready to work it here in the albums because uh, I saw the, the pattern went in a different direction. All right, so now let's see what it does.
Okay, that little extra made a big difference, so I'm not so tight. So this piece is going to measure at seven and five eighths across. And then we are at seven and three quarters in its height. Now your waterfall, you're going to make 10 of these. They are going to measure five and five eighths by three and five eighths. And then you're gonna score at a half on this end and you're gonna wanna, you're gonna want 10 of them. And then we're gonna put them on the vertical here, cascading downward. So let's go ahead and get those on. I am going to turn this around. It is so much easier for me to put them on in this direction. So I'm gonna place the first uh, ones for each column so that I have them as the markers going forward. I'm holding the one on my left hand down. I don't want it to move. And I'm about a quarter of an inch off the top. And I am about an eighth of an inch put that on there straight, but I didn't, goodness sakes. What a silly willy here. Now you can just fix that right up. I don't have enough tearing. So this is measuring right at a quarter, so I need to pull this up a little bit on this end. That's why it was off. Okay. And now we're gonna set this one. And so that I'm not crooked, I'm gonna use my ruler. And I I'm going to be about 1 16th, or maybe an eight, actually it looks like about an eighth of an inch in between them. A little short on my left, but I'm okay with that. All right. <clears throat> Onward we go. And I'm just gonna come and butt right up next to this. I'm not gonna really press the tape in until I know that I've got good alignment down here. Because if I've gotta pick it up and move it, it's gonna be easier if I haven't burnished it down into the paper. Okay, steady hands. So far, so good. There's five that go down each side. Now see this one's tailed off just a tad bit. So I wanna pick this up, hopefully without tearing it, and then lift it on my right hand side. How much? Well, no, it's still tailed off. This is very delicate, lifting this tape. Oh, 
Okay, that looks better. I'm going to burnish that so that it sits in place. Okay. One, two, three, four. And we'll place the fifth one in. And then I'll work on the other side. <coughs> perfect, but I'm not going to stress over it. Actually filming these videos using my iPhone, but I am trying a DSLR Canon, and I'm going to see how that works. It's going to be kind of new. Now that one laid really super nice. So I'm, like I said, I'm taping with using two, so you might see some extra equipment here. Um, but I'm going to try and get away from my iPhone if it's at all possible. Okay, <clears throat> so now I've taken primarily a lot of scraps and I have cut uh, the necessary pieces to put on the fronts. If there's enough scraps left over, I might come back and cover the back sides, but for now, I'm just gonna cover the fronts. So I've gone ahead and laid out a pattern. I'm gonna put uh, the, this beautiful floral up on the front, and then I'm going to put a card on the top. I always have always liked to have kind of a theme on the front of it and then the photos can start underneath and down we go now I these are cutting at three and a half by five and they seem to fit in just fine so these are the cutout cards that I'm using and I'm backing them on some black cardstock, and then they're going to go right here in the center. And I just looked up. My iPhone is still filming, but I honestly don't know if my camera is. So this is going to be interesting. I've not used it before. Okay, so that's that pile. one down.
Now I did cut some extra strips. They're gonna go right here in this gusset. I will put those on a little bit later. I wanna get these panels on first. When I laid these out with the scraps, I tried to kind of alternate the colors so that the pattern wasn't repetitive. And now I'll put in the blue one. over here. Almost done with these. And since how I'm in here, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly put these in these are half inch gussets, so each one of these is three eighths of an inch. I don't like seeing big black gussets. I don't like seeing red ones or white ones, whatever color cardstock I'm using. So I will always try and add some color in there to break all that black up. And like I said, if I've got enough leftovers, I will come back and cover the back side. I just remembered I've got these back here. <clears throat> and as you notice, you've got a nice big spot here, so a nice horizontal 5x7 photo would look really good back here. Or you could put in a couple of smaller ones. Why does that look off? Oh, 
Oh, that's because. Oh. oh silly girl. <laughs> okay. So now the waterfalls are done. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to our panels. We're going to start with the measurement on our right hand panel is going to be four and three quarters by the seven and seven eighths i think because so i did have to redo this so i might be off a fraction oh come on a fraction of an, of an inch I'm, I'm just fine okay so back to this four and three quarters by seven and seven eighths. You're gonna do two scores. One's gonna be at a half inch and the other one is going to be at five eighths of an inch. And we're gonna go ahead and get these in here. Now, because of the bulk that's already building up, in here, I'm gonna wanna, if I can get past the signatures, goodness sakes, I'm gonna wanna come up to the middle of the gusset and then fold these over. That way my gusset's sitting here on the outside. And then the this panel over here, our left panel is going to be six inches by seven and seven eighths. And again, you're going to do two scores, one at a half and then one at five eighths. sneak up to the, about the middle of the gusset. I'm going to take this tape off. Where's my picker? It's so much easier, but I don't want to move my right hand because it means I'd have to replant the... There's a lot of bulk in there. So just be aware of that when you um, go to build it, you're going to have some bulk, but we want these gussets on the, the outside. All right, magnets. I already placed my one magnet um, and now I'm going to, but I put them on backward, so All right, there we go. Now I'm gonna run a little bit of tape over these because there's not much tape underneath securing these. All right, so let's work on the inside. Using a couple of scraps, actually this is this piece here is the remainder of this piece. These are eight by eights. And I cut this to fit here and I'm using the leftover over here. And then I am creating a small pocket and I'm using some of the scraps to match the base to put on here and then I'm going to put some black little uh, beveled gems there so let's go ahead and get get all this put together and these um, as I've stated before in my other videos these are always cut to fit and 
I don't use exact measurements when I'm measuring these pieces. I just have an eye for what I want to see. And I need to get that. I just, I like to see about 1 16th of an inch on the edges. Come right up to that score mark. Get it flush with the bottom. That way I don't have an overhang at the other end. There we go. This is the last of my Halloween stockpile. So I hope somebody comes out with some really cool Halloween paper here pretty soon. And this is just some beveled black gems that I got at Michael's. And now we have a nice little pocket right there. And now over here, because I'm dealing with a magnet, I'm going to tape this one down. And yes, I have had to lift papers um, because I either didn't, oh, I built wrong. I didn't anticipate the bulk on something, um, got it all finished, it didn't work out, so I had to go in and get in and adjust and move the magnets. So yes, I have had to do that. So I will always favor taping the paper down when, it, when I'm covering a magnet. Now I took out of my scraps this little strip here, backed it on some cardstock, and I'm gonna put it right here. So it helps to give a separation so you can put some photos up here. I just did a little bit of tape. I kind of pre-marked where I wanted it to go. 
Now this little guy here, I want him to be a tuck. So I put some pa paper, I put some tape right here and I'm gonna just lay him in. So there's only tape on about that much of his backside. And what it does um, allow for, so let me grab something here. I'll use this piece. What it allows for is a tuck. So you can tuck your photo in there or in here. Okay, so that's your inside. We're gonna close it. And then this was the piece that was gonna go here and I'm gonna tape it. Tape, extra tape that just push it under. Give her a close. All right, this piece is going to go right here. And I'm just going to glue it on. Again, these are all eight by eights. And this is out of the chipboard. And I think this is supposed to go in this way because they're supposed to line up. Is that where that goes? I, it fell apart when I took it out. No, I think I had it the right way. Now, okay, so now I've been looking. That's six. This is six, that's five, that's four, three, two, one. So it goes this direction. Sorry for the hesitation there, but I needed to make sure I had the clock in the right direction. This is out of the chipboards. And then I'm making a pocket down here on the front of this. And it's going to be at two inches and mine measures five and three eighths. So you wanna double check that measurement 
I gotta grab something here real quick. You wanna double check that measurement on yours before you just arbitrarily um, cut to my measurements. <clears throat> and I need, I was gonna put some, and then I went and took a scrap, two pieces of scrap, and it's going to be cut to fit. So it's gonna look like that. on this. And then I'm going to cut and put a rim of black beads. I want to cut it right there. Where did I cut? Normally I like to try to have this done, but I forgot. You shouldn't have to watch me my stuff. And then I wanted to put some form of journaling here on the front. And so I've got this card that I chose and I'm just gonna run some tape across the bottom of it. Come in here just at a slight slant. And then that signature is done. And you've got your waterfall. And like I said, I might come back and cover these if I've got uh, enough leftover paper to do that. So let's go ahead and get some tape on the back side and we can slip it into our album. three-eighths of an inch strip dead center of these waterfalls to help secure the weight. We'll give her a good burnish. And then we'll grab the book. And we will put it in. Slowly but surely, I'm getting this one done.
know why I'm just just get it up here where I can see it instead of poking around for it. Okay, there we go. We're all set and we'll come back and do the next signature. So I will see you then.